there is a brand new thriller on HBO. It's called Caddo Lake. It's produced by M. Night Shyamalan. It is directed by Celine Held and Logan George. Both Celine Held and Logan George worked with Shyamalan on Servant, which is why I'm assuming he decided to produce this under his Blinding Edge Pictures. I'm going to start by telling you what it's about, or ostensibly what it's about. So Caddo Lake centers around two protagonists. There's Ellie, who is a teenager who constantly fights with her mother. And then there's Dylan O'Brien, who plays Paris, this guy who tragically loses his mother in an accident after she drives her car off a bridge because she experienced some kind of seizure. That's where the movie begins. And for the most part, you would think that this is a blue-collar, Louisiana, swampland thriller. That's how it kind of plays out to start. And then the movie kind of goes places. And we're not going to spoil anything for you. But even if I wanted to, I realized I couldn't because I think I would require a whiteboard so I can draw a chart (laughs) in trying to explain all of the things that are happening in this movie. I mean, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I really enjoyed this film. Yeah, yeah. And it was completely unexpected. Yeah. And I think, funnily enough, even though he didn't direct it, it is the most Shyamalan movie I have seen in a very long time. Completely and absolutely and utterly agree. Even the stuff he did before Servant, I think he did, what was that Elevator one? Did he direct that or produce it? I can't remember. Yeah. But he did a series of very small, low-budget movies, right? Yeah, but they were leaning very much to the horror genre, right? Yes. Whereas this is... Just chef's kiss, straight up, old school M. Night Shyamalan stuff. And it is fantastic. Don't try and think too much about this movie with regards to explaining why things happen the way they do. Because if you do, then I think you go down a really slippery slope of plot contrivances. I don't know if I agree with you on that. In the sense that the plot contrivance here in air quotes is very much an M. Night Shyamalan red herring. If you try and make sense of some of the logical leaps, right, it could be problematic. It's classic Shyamalan in that the thing that sets up what is happening is just that. It is literally a vehicle for human drama to happen around it. It's not the point of the movie. They don't solve the problem and that is okay. M. Night Shyamalan does that the best. Yeah, this is a movie that functions on emotion in the sense that there is a twisty narrative, there are plot contrivances, but the reason you enjoy it is because you're going on the feeling of the characters and what they're experiencing, as opposed to trying to explain stuff. I know it's a leap of a comparison. It works very much in the same way Tenet does, where you don't try and explain the movie You just let it kind of wash over you. Yeah, you just watch it, feel it, enjoy it. There are some movies where you want to sort of sit there and chew on it and chew on it and you get more and more enjoyment the longer you chew on it. But but Tenet isn't. As soon as you start to ask questions, you just end up going, huh? That's so silly. But if you don't, if you don't think about it, if you're sitting there by yourself just watching this thing and going on this journey, it is a great ride. And I think Caddo Lake is surprisingly a very good ride. But I'll tell you why it works so well, right? And I think credit to the writer-directors. I think the reason it works so well is because they too didn't get caught up in the twist. The twist is there. And it's very fascinating. And I don't even call it like a third act twist because it happens about halfway through the film. You kind of know what's going on. And because you know what's going on, 
The rest of it is about the journey of these characters. Yes. And because they don't get caught up in the twist, they don't bother explaining any of it. They don't bother explaining why Caddo Lake is the way it is and why these strange happenings are happening and whatever happened to Paris's mother, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The twist is not the payoff, right? No. The twist is literally the journey of the characters that you are following. And I feel like that is fantastic. I feel like that isn't given enough due respect when I don't have to sit there through a monologue of this guy going through a library looking through the native aboriginal people's writings about God and what this no it's fine sometimes it doesn't fucking matter sometimes a lot of time actually it really doesn't matter I just want a story where I'm invested in the characters where I'm wanting to see their success and or failure and that's all it is this is the kind of thriller that streamers should be making that's exactly what my wife said yeah right in the sense that it is a low budget movie i don't know how much the budget is but i'm assuming it's a low budget movie because it's pretty much shot on one location Mm. it's got some fantastic performances by its two leads dylan o'brien and eliza scanlon who carry the movie mind you yeah and It's got a very well-plotted-out story where attention to detail is paramount and none of it feels like it's cheating you either. Because as the story is progressing and as I am learning new information, it feels fitting. There is no deus ex machina here. And I think from the very get-go, when you find yourself in Dylan O'Brien's car under the water, that scene, that moment already sets the tone, which, mind you, was beautifully shot. It was like 30 seconds or a minute long. And it's under the water and he's escaping and his mum is like coughing up blood. And I thought that was incredibly well shot and kind of sets the tone of what's to come. In hindsight, I will say I would have loved to have seen this in the cinema, but this wasn't made for the cinema and that was fine. Like, I'm okay with the director's decision to just be a TV movie. And I think that may have given this lower expectations maybe so i'm hoping we get to see more from the directing writing team but it is so well done i'm really trying hard to avoid spoilers here but when you do watch it you will realize that it is so easy to trip up over the story that they're trying to tell it is so fucking easy we've seen people do it all the time like netflix would just trip this up the wazoo and just have 12,000 flashbacks for no reason. Here, it is a tight, tight 99 minutes. There isn't any fat here. If anything, I would have loved a little bit more fat. I think that the story could have breathed a little bit more, but man, this is so well done. Despite being made for streaming, the fact remains that it is actually very cinematically shot. It looks incredible. I don't know where they shot it. I think they may have shot it in Louisiana. I'm not sure. It looks like it looks very swamplandy, but it's beautiful and it looks incredibly cinematic. And I think that adds to the suspense and tension of the story that they're trying to tell. The other thing that I found very interesting about this movie is, and this speaks to how good the writing is. So writing a movie like this is a tricky proposition in that the audience is finding out information at the same time as the characters in the film. It's tricky because you don't want either to be ahead of the other. If the audience realizes what's happening ahead of time, you lose them, right? They could zone out. They could lose interest. So you've got to keep it on par so that every discovery is just as surprising to the audience as it is to the characters on screen. And I think the writers strike a really great balance in that because as I was watching this, I didn't know what to expect. I went in completely blind. So I'm discovering stuff and I'm being genuinely surprised. At the same time, these characters on screen are going, what the fuck? That is very good writing. Avoid researching this film. If we've sold this to you, just go and watch it. Don't look for a trailer. All of that's unimportant. Dylan O'Brien was the lead in Maze Runner. Eliza Scanlon was one of the women in Little Women. Don't look it up because as soon as you read about it and you find out what it is trying to do, I think it will ruin it for you. Me and my wife were literally just scrolling through HBO Go and we're like, huh, 
kind of in the mood for a thriller. This is a new movie that's out that I've never heard of. Let's watch it. And that was the best way to get into it. And I think that's all you need to know. Yeah. We cannot say any more. And I don't think we should. I think it would be a disservice to you and to this movie. So just go watch Caddo Lake. It is available wherever you get your HBO. Astro, Unify TV, HBO Go. Let us know what you think. You know how to reach out. Goggler MY, all of our social media feeds. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline, 012-524-5208. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast.